Father's Day came and uh, Ben worked the morning shift. We opened up presents and he said he was just going to duck down the road back to work to get some ice cream and chips. And um, while he was gone, I just felt this gush of water. And we jumped in the car and raced into Brisbane. At that time, um, both of us were under the impression that a baby at 23 weeks can't survive. And um, we went into the PAC, the um, Pregnancy Assessment Centre, and they hooked up the, sort of the belly monitor, which is like an ultrasound, and her heartbeat was there. She's still alive. Um, so for about 10 minutes, we sort of had this hope of everything was going to be okay. Maybe, maybe it was just something funny had happened and then the uh, obstetrician came in and said, no, she's, she's in distress. There's something quite wrong and you have a fever and we think you've got an infection. And you know, if we don't get her out, she's going to die. And then they asked us how, how do we want to get her out? You know, in the end, we, we chose to give birth to her naturally and we put it in God's hands as to whether if she, she survived, well, then we'd fight with her because she fought. But if she decided she couldn't, then that's what was meant to be. But our little girl came out literally kicking and fighting. So we fought beside her. Yeah. At that gestation, you know, you have to be realistic. She had about a 40% chance of survival. Um, you know, you, you start to think about what does that mean and you know is she gonna be okay um, so she started with uh, regular intubated ventilation and then they had to move her to an oscillating ventilator she had every type of ventilation that there is so at 23 weeks there was no no way without that ventilator she would have survived On the Tuesday, we sat down with the neonatologists um, and a couple of the other doctors and the social worker and they said, look, um, even though she has the brain bleeds and everything, she's, she's looking pretty good. I asked the tentative question at that point of when I could hold her, thinking it's going to be weeks, months, and they said, no, if you want to, you can hold her tomorrow. So on Wednesday, when she was three days old, I to hold my baby girl for the first time yeah they took 45 minutes to get her out of her crib it took four nurses and they have to sort of do this big maneuver and the crib itself like the, the top comes off like a spaceship and they pick her up and they've all got to hold all these cords and tubing and everything and they put her on you and you know they sort of tuck her down into your chest and they put blankets on top and everything and then they sort of say you've got to stay really still <laughs> and at first I was so petrified I'm like oh my god am I gonna you know is this hurting her or anything and then all of a sudden they said look you know look at her heartbeat look at her respirate everything just decreased all her the support that they needed to give her for her oxygen, they actually turned it down because she was so content. And they said, this is, <laughs> this is what we want. This is why we do kangaroo cuddles and, and skin to skin. Both of us had a big long cry. <laughs> um, but it was amazing because I got to hold her. Yeah, it was wonderful. <laughs> Now 
Nick here is one of those places that you hope no one ever has to see. But I want people to know that they're there because they are miracle workers and they make a really, really awful, awful thing bearable. They want to make sure that you get to take your baby home. I can't thank them enough because without them, without that place, without what they did, I, I wouldn't have, we wouldn't have our Moira to be able to save your baby when they're born that small is it's it's a miracle and the only way that miracle happens is with those donations so that we get the equipment and they get to do the training and they get to have everything that they need to save these babies so it's wonderful